you've waited all week for it, and now it's time to wind down and chill with Grit Daily. All right, everyone, it's time to wind down and chill, and we're very lucky we've got a special guest today. We've got Taylor Benham Cuneo. She's the managing director of Ramsgate Winery, and they're really pushing the envelope on respect to national distribution. One of the things that's kind of interesting here, and we're really excited to talk to Taylor about, now we don't quite do wine and food pairings the way that Taylor does, but they've built a heck of a brand by working with all kinds of local chefs and bringing that farm to table experience to the winery with unique food and wine pairings. So hi Taylor, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. So one of the questions I think it's impossible for you know anybody within a winery to ask, but to answer I should say, is out of all of the wines that are produced at Ramsgate, do you have a favorite? <laughs> um, I have a lot of favorites. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm just drinking, I love our state Pinot Blanc. It's dry, it's crisp, it's refreshing, it's perfect for this time of year. If I'm cooking, I love our cab. We hired a new winemaker a couple of years ago. His name's Joe Nielsen, and he's incredible. And he brought some wine that he had been working on from a vineyard in, uh, it's called Burler, and it has become my new favorite. And if I'm cooking, then that's what I want. Oh, I love it. I'm the same way. Like in the summer, nice chili whites, and then the rest of the time, yeah, a nice good California cab. Absolutely. One of the things that I think has been particularly innovative, and there's a lot, you know, based on what I've read about Ramsgate, is this whole concept of a two-bottle club membership. So can you tell us about how that's been received to help you grow your wine business? Yeah, so that's new. Um, started actually right before COVID started um, in March. And the idea is that it's a subscription. Anybody can drink two bottles every, every month. I mean, basically, it's a month. It's a bottle a month. And you get it bi-monthly. And the idea is that you don't even have to think about it. It's not a huge hit to your pocketbook or your credit card. And it just is this like subscription type of, of style where it shows up and you've got two new bottles of Ramsgate wine. If you like it, you can buy more, but it's, you just don't have to even think about it. It just shows up and you get to enjoy it. It always comes with like a cool little story or information about the wine, but it's kind of just like, we call it the no brainer membership because it's all about the wine. It's simple. It's not a huge investment or commitment. And Taylor, anybody who's listening to this right now as part of our wine down and chill audience, they can handle a bottle a month. They can't. I oh, have yeah, one hundred percent confidence. <laughs> and especially lately, we can handle more than a bottle a month. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, tell us a little bit about your success. So we've heard about Joe Nielsen and what he's brought to the winery, but you've only been around since 2011. So you've hit the mark fairly quickly with tremendous reviews from Wine Spectator and such. What do you think's behind your success? I think it's sheer determination. I think that when Ramsgate opened, it wanted to bring not just wine to people, but it wanted to bring hospitality and great food and a great experience and be kind of a lifestyle type of brand. And I think that that's what set us apart from everybody else is that we offer more than just amazing wine. We offer a sense of place. When you come to the estate, it's, you know, it takes, it still takes my breath away. So it's a really beautiful place. You get amazing service. You can do wine and food pairings. I mean, we were some of the first ones to be doing these in-depth pairings that were more than just cheese and charcuterie and that type of thing. Um, but I think it's, it's a package deal for Ramsgate. I think it's everything kind of coming together. It's our location. We're really close to San Francisco. We're about 30 minutes from the Golden Gate Bridge. So we're the very first winery that you hit when you're heading into wine country. So I think our location had a lot to do with it as well. Now, tell me a little bit more about this on your statement. I was curious about what was stated there. And it said, we're creating a winery with precision and farming sustainably. So say more. Yeah. So um, when we hired Joe, he came onto the property and we decided that, you know, we wanted to do our part for the environment, for people enjoying our wines. You know, people trust us to provide them with an amazing product. So we're moving the, um, it takes about three years to get certified organic. We're one year in, 
So we have two more years to go, but all of our practices are organic and sustainable. Um, we have our sustainability certification as well. So we waste as little as possible from the kitchen to um, service and we are farming organically. Oh, fantastic. That's really important to me and to a lot of our listeners. Some of my columns that are most well read are those that talk about biosustainability efforts and things. It's definitely more than just a movement. Like people care. They have. Yeah, we all care. I mean, we all want to live long. We all want to enjoy wine. And I think it's important to people to know what's in their products. Absolutely. Now, we, you are renowned for your local like, culinary pairings. And you sort of mentioned, you know, that you went, you know, far beyond just the basic charcuterie plate and a few cheeses. How did all that get started? Because you were among the first to really take it to that level. Yeah. So um, I was actually hired at Ramsgate in 2011 as the sous chef. And uh, they had an amazing chef in place. Um, and he kind of got the ball rolling with this program and this idea that we were going to do more. We were actually going to pair the wine with the food. Um, and he wasn't here for very long. He moved on. And then um, I stepped into the role. And I just, I wanted everything to be done with intention. So when you're eating, of course, we know steak goes with a big red, but what else? So kind of dissecting the, the flavor profile and the texture of the wine and understanding that and then building a pairing around those qualities versus just kind of guessing. I mean, in a restaurant, you have a psalm that makes a suggestion of a dish with a wine or vice versa, but we actually get to taste the wine first before we pair. So it becomes this very um, in-depth process. And our current executive chef, her name is Stacy Combs. She's very talented and she's kind of carrying on that torch. But that's, I think, what sets us apart is that we take the time to really look at the wine, taste the wine, understand what, it, it's, what it's made of, and then tailor a pairing around that wine specifically. I've had the good fortune of having some incredible like wines and food pairings uh, around the world through my travels, but I'm always curious, what's the most unusual pairing to date that's been done? What's the one that shocked everyone? Oh my gosh. There's been a lot, but I think the one that stands out is we did a cauliflower panna cotta. So a savory panna cotta with our, at that time it was the Carnero Chardonnay. It was our Appalachian Chardonnay, but that was the one that people, you look at it. We did like a Madras curry, crispy shallot with it. So it was, it had a little bit of that warm spice, but the cauliflower panna cotta you would expect to be sweet was actually very savory and delicious. <laughs> I'm, I'm like salivating as you're describing oh, it. so good. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the most unusual ones. Um, but we've done a lot. I mean, we did, we did a, a pasta, a, a basil uh, ravioli, so basil in the dough. And then we did a house-made ricotta with, orange zest and lemon zest in it. And that, cause I was having trouble pairing a wine. I was having trouble with the wine going with things. And so I kept working towards it. And that was, that to me was the ultimate pairing. It wasn't unusual, but it was the ultimate pairing. Well, especially if you had to work so hard to achieve it and then you nail it and go like, da -da. yeah, that's just I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Now on the flip side, let's talk a little bit about you know, your role and sort of what's behind the business here and some of the challenges of trying to go nationally, particularly in this era of COVID and all kinds of craziness. Yeah, I mean, so Ramsgate was built, you know, we want people to visit our estate, but that only goes so far. And our presence outside of California is, you know, it, it could be better and we're working towards that. But originally we weren't trying to do you know national sales and be in a lot of restaurants and hotels but over time i mean that's how you get your brand out there that's how people get to know you and we were starting on this trajectory of actually you know getting really cool placements in in texas and in illinois and new york and new jersey and florida tennessee we had some really cool things in the works 
And then COVID kind of shut us down. And that's okay because now everything shifted towards this online opportunity with online retailers. So now we're working with online retailers and kind of just shifting our focus because the reality is that we're not, in, at least in the foreseeable future, at least for the rest of this year, it is unlikely that we will get restaurant placements because most restaurants have been shut down and hotels and they're just trying to get through their own inventory. So from a national perspective, I mean, that, that's the way these online wine clubs that people have where they can experience multiple wineries in one shipment. Those are, those are kind of our targets right now. Got it. That's really does seem to be the way to go. Especially I know yeah. like on this side, I'm on, you know, the East coast and I like the wines on the left coast. And so, and, and <laughs> ships, you know, Jersey's one of those odd States uh, that there's all kinds of, you know, legal, legal stuff that prevents folks from, from sending wine. Yes. So that, that creates some challenges as well. Let's turn things here to, the idea of having a career within the winemaking business, you know, is there any advice that you'd want to share you know, to other women who are considering a similar path? I would say that there are a lot of women that we don't see on a regular basis that are kind of like, I would call them the neck of the wine industry. <laughs> they, they turn the head. Um, I'm part of a women's group. It's called women in wine and we're all GM level women who run wineries of various sizes and success. And uh, it's pretty interesting, but I would say you have to be passionate about hospitality. You have to be passionate about wine and customer service because a lot of it is customer service and you, you have to be willing to just put in, put in the hours and the work. I mean, I have worked in hotels and I've worked in restaurants and by far working in wine has been the best. I can never go back. Um, but I also am so passionate about wine and hospitality and providing an amazing product and service to people. And I think that if you have that and you feel that and you're passionate about what you do and what you love, then I think that the sky is the limit in this industry. Um, but it's, I mean, it's tough. It's, it's definitely hard and I've worked my way up, but I think um, that the wine industry is a great place for women and it's a great place uh, to feel empowered as well. Um, and it's constantly evolving. So it keeps you on your toes. <laughs> Absolutely. Pretty much everything does. And it's, and clearly you're passionate about wine, you know, that definitely comes through. And I think that you're so right that wine, it's an experience. And the more that you can tap into that and connect with people on that level, I think that the better received the product is, particularly when it's high quality like Ramsgate. Yeah, I agree. So last question, wrapping things up here. What do you wish people knew about Ramsgate wines? Um, I wish that they knew that they were so good. <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> I love our wines. I mean, that is what gets me out of bed every day is just, I wish everyone knew that Ramsgate was built, you know, we're not family owned. We are owned by four gentlemen who are also passionate about wine. And I just, I want people to know that you don't have to physically come to Ramsgate to enjoy what Ramsgate has to offer when you pop a bottle and you pour yourself a glass, you'll know instantly what makes Ramsgate Ramsgate. And that is amazing wine. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for this time today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Follow us at Grit Daily on social media and listen to all of our podcasts, including Like a Boss on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, or your favorite platform. For special guest submissions, email Laura Lynn at gritdaily.com.